We are D and Allie. Come along and join us aboard Journey. Oh, oh yeah, seasons change. No promise of tomorrow, but that's okay. Just live in the moment day by day. Why Mexico? Why not? Research for this trip began on Noon site, which gave Dee a lot of good basic information about Mexico and arriving by water. One of the links there mentioned the Isla Mujeres Cruisers Net Facebook page. This ended up being a good connection to a wealth of information by just searching different topics within the group. We also connected with several people who had experience with the crossing and familiar with weather and preferred routes. These connections also led to meeting Salt Shaker. While planning the route, Dee learned about how the Gulf Stream and the Yucatan Current play major roles in planning. They're really one in the same, as the Yucatan Current comes up the coast of Belize and Mexico up into the Gulf, then makes a hard right hand three-quarter turn back down toward Cuba, then becomes a little disorganized as it turns under the dry Tortugas. It then becomes the Gulf Stream and a lot stronger and organized as it travels the Keys and up the East Coast. This means you will cross the current twice even if you leave from Texas. The current also changes intensity and location. So D suggests an app where you can see currents. D used various ones, Windy, Predict Wind, and his favorite, Ventusky. Where to leave from, Key West or the Dry Tortugas? Leaving from Key West will make the trip a little bit shorter, but since the best place to cross the Gulf Stream is near Dry Tortugas, we chose this route for several reasons. We've been trying for a while to get there. It shortens our trip by at least 50 nautical miles, and we could go there during the day, spend the night, and time our departure from there to arrive in Isla Mujeres in the morning hours. Dee would overestimate the Gulf Stream and underestimate the Yucatan current strength. They balanced each other out. Our route, as you can see, took a somewhat direct route to the tip of Cuba. We had considered more of a southerly route to Cuba than follow the coast of Cuba, but our winds favored this route although we did make minor adjustments while en route. Leaving the Dry Tortugas, we ended up with southeast winds until the tip of Cuba, then a temporary southwest wind that made it a little rough, but it clocked as predicted to more easterly and returned to a more west and direct route for the last 90 nautical miles. We had planned on going more south after rounding Cuba to ride with the current if weather and winds dictated, but they didn't. More planning details and information can be found on our blog post. The link will be in the description below, or you can visit our website at soulmatesjourney.com. We leave Key West early on the morning of St. Patrick's Day 2022 with Salt Shaker to head out to the Dry Tortugas on our first leg to Mexico. Two legs to reach Mexico and a third to reach our final destination, the marina in Puerto Aventuras, Mexico. I don't know if you can see Salt Shaker over there, but there's our buddy boat. The dry tortugas stop there and leave sometime Friday midday across to Mexico. So, what we can ask for is it to be like this. This is one of our best days ever on the water. Very smooth. The stunning blue water as we near the dry tortugas is the prettiest by far we have seen in the U.S. The sea turtle is an added bonus. I just love catching a glimpse of the sea turtles when we travel. Checking out this beautiful blue water we are surrounded by. By late afternoon, we get our first glimpse of the sand dunes and soon to follow Fort Jefferson. We've made it to the Dry Tortugas. 
According to the website drytortugas.com, the dry tortugas was discovered by Ponce de Leon in 1513. The dry tortugas were named after the large population of sea turtles living in the island's surrounding waters. Tortuga means turtles in Spanish, and Ponce de Leon himself caught over 100 sea turtles during his time on the island. The name dry tortuga was later given to the island to indicate to other mariners that the landmass lacked fresh water, which was an extremely important detail for seafarers to know. The area is known for its treacherous reefs. In 1825, a lighthouse was built on Garden Key to warn ships and guide them toward safety. At the time, shipwrecks were common, and with the underwater wrecks dating back to the 1600s, the Dry Tortugas currently possesses one of the richest concentrations of shipwrecks in North America. It is also because of these large reefs surrounding the Tortugas that the U.S. was able to establish one of the most strategic harbors in U.S. history, Fort Jefferson. Construction of the fort began in 1846, and although it was never officially finished, it remains a historic icon of the Dry Tortugas and receives thousands of visitors yearly. We made it into our anchorage before the seaplane landed to get their last load of passengers. Salt Shaker finally makes it around Fort Jefferson to anchor by us. For video. I don't know if you can tell it or not. Air traffic control is FUBAR. Frigates up overhead. I don't know if you can see them or not. We watch tons of frigates circle the fort, the most we've ever seen together until we make it to Mexico. Never seen that many frigates in one place. The sunset over Fort Jefferson was just beautiful, and that full moon. We were super excited about knowing we would have that the next two nights. in front of us. We're going to hit them. We woke early in time for the first seaplane landing. Exciting to watch them come in and beach the plane. And now it's time to go snorkeling over off Loggerhead Key. We had a great morning snorkeling, but on the way back, the waves had picked up and we caught a rogue wave. And the way I was sitting in Shelby, well, I pulled something in my back. At the time, we weren't sure what had happened, just that I was in immense pain. We finally got back to Journey, and Dee got mad to me and rubbed my back down. He found some material to make a makeshift brace. After about an hour, I said, let's just go. We didn't know if it was the right choice, but we made the decision and prepared to leave by about 3 p.m. The seaplane made it back for their midday pickup after a yacht anchored in the no anchor area and just would not move. We actually were on the borderline. So you can see that they are well behind us toward the beach. But the seaplane pilots are obviously very good at their job. All right, everyone has left the yacht. Now the seaplanes have arrived. 
think they can still do it. The Miss Money Bags is just filming it. Wait a minute. Yeah, she says, I need to go hide. They're getting too close. Salt Shaker pulled anchor before us, but chose a different path out of the dry Tortugas, which would actually put them several miles behind us. We kept up with them until well into the night when we lost them on our screen. Stay tuned for our next 43 hours. We are living in the moment, capturing enjoyment. Oh. We are living in the moment, life full enjoyment. Oh, 